Namaskar. 2021 marks 31 years of that shameful night that rendered thousands of us homeless. Strife and struggle aren't new to Hindus of Kashmir, who over centuries of suppression have been reduced to a micro minority in their own land. The 1990 exodus, as you all know, is their seventh known exodus. As the Kashmir Valley became one of the first known laboratories of jihad in the world, the Valley's Hindus were the first to bear the brunt. They were seen as agents of the government of India, symbols of Hindu in India who needed to be wiped out. Over the years, what has pained the community more than the loss of their homeland is complete apathy by civil society and intellectual elite. Dubbed as the wrong kind of minority, the human rights commissions across the world have never picked up the cause of Kashmiri Hindus. Anniversaries are times to observe an event, in this case, a very tragic one, but they're also a time to take stock of what has happened in the years that have gone by. A lot has happened in Kashmir. Article 370 has been abrogated. Section 35 has been struck off. The state has been reorganized and Jammu Kashmir is now a union territory, but much still needs to be done before Hindus of Kashmir can safely go back home. I will just point out three things among many things that I think should have been done years ago, but haven't been done till now. And I think on this 31st anniversary, it's a shame that we are still talking about those things, but talk we must, and we must force the government of India to act on these things. Number one, justice. No. Kashmiri Hindu will ever feel safe in Kashmir Valley unless those who killed them, raped them, maimed them, and burned their homes are made to face the court of law. What happened in 1990 was a crime against humanity. Those who perpetrated the violence are roaming free on the roads of Kashmir. No one has been punished. No convictions have been made. No cases have ever been registered or pursued against the murderers. Justice must be brought against those who were actively involved in the killings. And that goes from right from the time from Pandit Tikalal Tapalu's death to Ajay Pandita's death just a few months ago. So no Hindu will feel safe in his home in Kashmir till his murderers roam freely. Second thing that we must remind ourselves today is fixing the narrative. There are hundreds of variations of what happened in 1990 floating around to this, to this day. Thousands of us have screamed and written and talked about wherever, whoever has given us platform we have spoken. Yet the jihadi narrative has been bought lock, stock and barrel by the liberal media that dominates the news space. A special investigation team must be set up to probe and put the jigsaw puzzle together so that we have one official narrative of what led to the exodus. We must have official version of how many lives are lost, how many houses were destroyed, how many women were raped, and how many people were tortured. No tragedy can be quantified, but at the same time, it's important to have one official version of what happened, which everyone accepts. This helps in countering the jihadi narrative that relentlessly propagates that some wanderlust suddenly gripped the pundits and they left their home of 5,000 years in search of some adventure, I suppose. Truth has been a casualty in Kashmir and it's important that the truth comes out. Only when the truth is established can the process of reconciliation begin. The liberal narrative, which has taken its cue from the jihadi narrative emanating from the valley, still believes that the pundits left on their own volition and there was no threat to their lives, their women and their property. To this then they add that the then governor of Jammu and Kashmir, Jagmohan coaxed and coached the pundits to leave. This is still a dominant narrative that we have not been able to change this 31 years later is truly a shame. The pundits have seen truth mauled and butchered. That perhaps pains more than the murders, rapes and loss of home. Number three, the most important thing that I would impress on today is chronicling of our story. 
there are thousands of stories every every kashmiri hindu has a story to tell every kashmiri hindu who was in kashmir on the night of 19th january 1990 has a story to tell but we have not been able to chronicle all their stories the generation there were three generations in, in kashmir at that time who faced the the terror the my grandparents generation is slowly passing on if we don't record their stories if we don't find out if we don't record everything that they have to say we will lose this story forever our parents generation were too busy to make sure that we are raised well with values and we can stand on our feet their story has not been told it is incumbent on my generation now that we record their stories and tell them to the world and now the technology is also helpful so all of us can do that with a simple phone camera so i request all of you that in this at least this one everyone can do that we must chronicle our story and the story of our family it's not easy to overwrite history but if there was ever a time to fix this tragedy this is it such windows of opportunity come rarely and when they do they must be seized namaskar